Are identity politics killing the left? This is a world. This is a world premiere. This is a world. So, hey, I'm back for a little bit more discussion on identity politics. So today I'm going to be having some tea with all of you. Today I'm, I'm again having another one of these loose teas. This is um, a lemon raspberry rooibos tea that, um, again, I got it in bulk um, thanks to a recommendation. A few of you have talked about the fact that buying in bulk is better for no waste. Um, one of the issues is uh, one of the places that I um, get tea in bulk um, uh, doesn't have it loose. You have to get kind of get it in packages. So I'm looking for a reliable source of bulk teas that I can like scoop it out and put in a paper bag or put it in my own container. But moving on from that. So I'm a little bit out of touch in terms of politics. I don't know what's been happening. I know that there was last, the last time I checked, there was a, a vote going to the Senate on the health care bill. And I don't know what, what happened with that. I need to check in and get caught up. Um, way behind because of the show, obviously, right? Um, also going to be heading back to Detroit soon. And when I get there, I hit the ground running on the International Pedagogy and Theater of the Oppressed Conference that I'm the lead, organi uh, lead organizer for. And then following that, uh, I have another student group coming from, this time from SUNY Purchase, in uh, Purchase, New York, and they're gonna be coming for two weeks. So all of that stuff is gonna be coming when I get back to Detroit. So yeah, I've been a little bit out of the loop. So yeah, get me caught up. Let me know, are there things that I, be, I should be paying attention to? Um, so talking a little bit more about identity politics. And again, you know, again, you know, I come at this, I come at these things, you know, I come at organizing as someone who developed a particular set of skills being in the theater. I'm, a, I'm you know, I was a, an actor for many years and then became a director. I spent time working in um, the not-for-profit realm, doing arts education with young people and have been running a theater company for now 20 years. Actually, my theater company launched in in 1997 and so just you know basically just turned 20 years old and so I, I i come to this work with a very particular set of skills you know i've been asked to participate in community organizing so i don't come at it um as someone who's been you know educated in you know critical theories around all that, I don't, you know, those are, I just, I'm somebody who comes uh, to this work with very, a very practical set of skills with very um, particular concrete projects in mind. And so uh, when I hear a lot of people talk about things like, you know, the social justice warrior and identity politics and all of these, you know, all of this jargon around, um, social transformation, I, I get a little bit lost and a little bit turned off about it because it, um, I know that a lot of this comes out of academia and uh, that seems really to be where a lot of these real, you know, heated discussions and heated arguments about, you know, what's screwing up the left and all these. And these things to me are a little bit ridiculous because I don't care. <laughs> You know what I mean? I don't care. I don't care how much you know about theory. I don't care how much you know about race theory. I know people. I work with people. I see what makes people tick, right? And I see what gets people excited. And I see what keeps people motivated over a long period of time. Like keeping a, 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 an organization, like founding an organization and keeping an organization running for 20 years, that's more than a lot of people who may even watch this channel have even been alive, right? Or certainly, if not alive, interested in anything, right? <laughs> interested in anything social, right? So I, you know, I come to this work with a very, like I said, again, I'm not going to, I don't want to beat a dead horse but a lot of these theories you know make me laugh because um, think labels get applied on me that I'm like what I don't even know what that is right where did you learn that word and um, it seems something that's very important to you but it doesn't affect me directly in my work so I'll take on a label I don't care I'll still be able to get my work done whether you what whatever it is that you think of me right and whoever you are because chances are I've worked with people who um, 
if they had labeled me the way that I've been labeled by people, say, on YouTube, uh, they, you know, may not even want to work with me, but they meet me and um, they think I'm a cool person and they want to work with me. They, uh, you know, they look at me as somebody who can get work done. But that's neither here nor there. So we're going to talk, though, about this identity politics. So I had to look it up, and, you know, I don't know if this definition is going to fly with everyone, but what I found was a tendency for people of a particular religion, race, social background, etc., to form ex exclusive political alliances, moving away from traditional, broad-based party politics, which to me, you know, already it's on one side, on one hand, it's, it's, it's problematic because it's, um, it's taking people who could be um, connected to a larger, a broader based political ideology, I guess, and um, forming like a smaller niche within that group. And it can, you know, lead to, I'm guessing, a really fractured movement, right? Really fractured energy happening, say, on the left or with amongst progressives or amongst Democrats. Um, I, however, feel like just this um, putting ourselves into these political categories to begin with leftist, you know, left, right, progressive, regret, you know, conservative, all of these things to me are already identity politics, right? They're already identity politics, um, especially when you see that people, um, certain types, ways of thinking seem to be drawn along party lines. For example, you know, diversity seems to be, you know, the realm of the left and, uh, you know, so that if I'm on the right, I have to be anti-diversity, which is absolutely ridiculous if you ask me. So, um, so, which is one of the reasons why I'm really open to this idea of really questioning uh, identity politics to begin with. Um, the one thing that I seem to be in agreement with, well, first of all, um, identity poli politics as an ideology um, was formalized in a key document in 1977. It was the Combehi River Collective, and it was in a statement in their manifesto, and they were a group of um, a collective of African American lesbian feminists, and they met in Boston between 1974 and 1980, um, and they made the term identity politics central to their mission. Um, you know, so understanding that there's a particular group of women who have are finding common cause around the issues that they feel are keeping them from really being able to pursue what we, you know, what we think of as the American dream, right? Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, right? Um, so that there's this idea that there are those of us who either intentionally or unintentionally have been um, prevented from pursuing the American dream. And that's either because, you know, you were enslaved or because there are, you know, ideo uh, ideological beliefs that keep one group or other from um, being able to participate or ideologies within one group that, you know, make them feel that another group is not deserving to belong um, to, um, to have access, equal access to these, you know, opportunities. And this happens, right? Uh, you know, it happens. I'm not saying that it necessarily happens across the board, but there are people who have power, who believe that, you know, some groups are more deserving than others for whatever reason. And it could be, you know, you know, I'm not saying who the person in power is at any given moment, that could be anyone, but you know, the human beings get involved and human beings and their beliefs and their ideologies and their, and their, uh, and their um, prejudices can create challenges for entire groups of people, depending on the, how much power an individual wields. And so, um, so this idea of, um, Modern identity politics arising out of a claim that the universalist humanism developed by enlightenment, by enlightenment social philosophy, espousing equality and human rights and embraced by Western democracies is inadequate to actually achieve its stated goals. This is claimed to be due to a number of factors, including differing 
historical experiences, culture, and power relationships between groups that invariably lead to oppression, um, uh, to lead to oppression. And I, that, I'm pulling that from, uh, there is a rational wiki, uh, rational wiki, um, article that I found really, really engaging and really presented what I thought was a balanced, uh, discussion of identity politics, why it's necessary and how in our modern left movement it's been weaponized, um, especially among academics. And, um, you know, that, all of that being said, it doesn't, you know, we don't want to throw out the baby with the bathwater. There certainly are groups that need to focus on particular challenges that they have to be able to take advantages of the benefits of our society. Um, and that needs to be done um, with the with the help of, you know, of the, of the general population, right? The general population needs to recognize that there are challenges that are exist and to remove those road roadblocks, right? And I'm not saying, again, I'm, I'm not saying that we need to, you know, give people special treatment or, but I do think that if the, a robot block exists, that we should be willing to consider that roadblock and consider ways to remove those roadblocks. Because if they can exist for one group, they can exist for, for um, any group, right? And I, I don't think that one group is ever going to be the sole um, target or even say like let's say victim of a particular challenge that exists within a society right although we might see um, members of a particular group who are disproportionately affected by challenges that exist in society right I don't know I don't know and so I came across um, a great article in um, the nation. It's what is the left without identi identity politics. And they actually present uh, four essays um, that look at identi identity politics in very different ways. One of them is from Walter Ben Michaels. And Walter Ben Michaels looks at um, the universe of exploitation and really thinks that we should be focusing more on what exploitation looks like in our society as opposed to, way to the ways that any one particular group um, again, may be disproportionately affected by that type of um, exploitation. There's an, uh, an essay by Charles Mills looking at whose identity politics. And um, it's interesting because I got Bruce Webb uh, left some links to Jack, what's going on, sweetie? We're go we'll go out soon. What's going on, sweetie? Good boy. Okay. Um, so, yeah, so um, Bruce Webb left me some links to. Um, I believe it was, uh, is it George Horn? I believe it was George Horn. I'm going to include the links and, um, uh, in the links that I was sent, they talk really about, you know, the, the birth of identity politics in the United States and the birth of identity politics in the U S is really around, you know, the creation of whiteness, right. As a, as a class distinction. Um, because before that you had Europeans, you had, you know, you had Englishmen, you had Irishmen, you had Scotsmen, you had Africans, you had all of these folks from, from, from all over the world being represented as the, you know, the citizens, these new, um, people who were part of the colonial project that was going to become the United States. And at some point it was decided that a, you know, divide and conquer strategy was going to be used. And so the label whiteness was given to, you know, your European who looked a certain way and then non-white was used for people who were, you know, mulattoes and blacks and um, indigenous people from this country to divide the labor class. And so like the invention of identity politics in the, Uni in the United States, at least, uh, really centers around whiteness and how, um, so uh, Charles Mills 
in whose identity politics really looks at um, how the role that whiteness plays in that. And not saying that white white people are responsible for you know all of the evils in the world, but looking at the way that um, you know the um, white majority tends to blame the um, the the the, the um, deterioration of the left on you know other groups and their identity politics, not looking at um, you know white people not looking at their own identity politics, which is very interesting. Um, there was also a Linda Hirschman has an article, uh, uh, an essay on expanding the circle, looking sp uh, specifically at this idea of securing the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, and what it means to really. Um, secure the blessings of liberty and who has been excluded from that circle and how a lot of the struggles that we see, particularly ones that center around identity politics, are about groups you know, trying to be included in, you know, that circle, you know, to, to you know, um, to um, secure the blessings of liberty for themselves and for their group. Um, and which is very different than um, this idea of being um, taking power, you know, this idea of, t of these groups taking power. I mean, some people may look at taking power as a strategy to secure the blessings of liberty for their particular interest groups, but um, it's a very different thing. Just simply wanted to be seen as a full member of the moral community, right? And this is something that as vegans we think about for animals as well, right? We know that, you know, animals aren't going to try to seize power and take over the world. We just want them to be accepted as members of the moral community. And then the last um, article in that um, Nation uh, article that I'll include a link to in the description box below is from Carla Murphy, who looks at the whole identity um, uh, identity politics as you know a distraction. Looks at it completely as a as a um, as a convention of you know academia to get us all talking about you know the problem of race, as opposed to looking at the particular um, the larger uh, issues. And uh, one of the great examples that um, that um, uh, Carla Murphy uses is talking about microaggressions and understanding that micro microaggressions do exist, but like that the micro should let us know where to prioritize those. You know, we should be looking at the macro aggressions in our society that cause the most damage and are, you know, the, that are responsible for the most violence. So those are just some thoughts <laughs> for today. We're not done. We're not done. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about uh, folks who are, you know, the the new identity politics, the most recent, where we see folks like, um, um, you know, ethno nationalist and the alt right, um, and uh, you know, even even you know neo Nazis looking for their place. Uh, at the table in terms of, you know, their liberties and wanting to have their liberties defended and the ways that the left may be, you know, regressive when it comes to um, their tactics in trying to deplatform the voices of those that we don't necessarily agree with. So that's coming up later in the week, but for now, that's it for this video. Like it if you like it share, comment, subscribe. This is Reg signing off. Love yourself. Peace. And I love myself. The world is a ghetto because